Hey guys, welcome to the second day of visiting Hue, the ancient city and past capital of Vietnam. Today we are visiting the most popular destination in Hue, called the Citadel, which served as a walled city and palace for the Vietnam's dynasty for 140 years, located on the northern bank of the Perfume River. And please stay with us until the end of the video, where we will take you to a beautiful pagoda on the river with an incredible story behind it. Okay guys, we are at the citadel uh, of the imperial city of Hue. Uh, this place was built beginning in 1802 and was finished about 1833. And this was the home of the, I'm going to say it wrong, but the Nguyen, <laughs> Nguyen or whatever dynasty. Tian. No, it's not Tian. Oh. It's Nguyen dynasty uh, that was around for about 140 years. And this place is huge. I think it's about 10 square kilometers or 10 square miles. And this place at one time had 160 buildings, mostly for government and functionary uh, duties because this was at one time the capital of Vietnam between um, 1802 and 1945. And during the 1968 Tet Offensive, which was during the Vietnam War, this place had heavy, heavy, heavy battle going on. And uh, it's go it went from 160 buildings to only 10 buildings. And the 10 buildings I guess we're going to be seeing as we walk around here. This place is a UNESCO heritage site. Uh, so it's very cherished by the country. And uh, it's already crowded, it's only nine in the morning and already groups and groups of people are here. So we're gonna just walk around and check it out. So enjoy the scenery. Today I'm gonna look like we at the Vietnamese lady. Yes, Anne looks like a Vietnamese lady. I look like a tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> well, so many people come here with the traditional Vietnamese dress, though. Yes, I, my guess is that a lot of them work here. We're now gonna get in line. We have no idea how much this costs, but I think it will be between 100 and 200 thousand dong per person. Uh, here's the line over here. So let's see how much it's gonna cost. Okay, so we bought two tickets for the Imperial City. Uh, you can also buy separate tickets to see tombs and mausoleums and stuff like that, which we didn't buy. Uh, so just to see the Imperial City, which is a big building over here, uh, it costs uh, for two people 400,000 dong, which is about $16. So uh, we're gonna start off the tour by doing this Imperial City. Then we have another place in mind we wanna see. So uh, let's check it out. It's right over here on the right. So we're going to be going into this. This is the map of the Imperial City. We're right here. We're going to be entering it. And we're going to be viewing all these buildings here. Let's take the entrance and uh, have a good visit. This is the Imperial City of Hue. So guy, we, we only have one and a half day here. If you plan to come to Bay, you should have like at least two day in here, one day tour and you don't have to rush like us because we have to check out at 12 and now it's already 9.30. We kind of like in the rush. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you can do this in one day. You just gotta start early. Everything opens at eight. We start, got a late start. Uh, but if you're here today, you can do everything. I yeah. mean, everything you want to see. Yeah. I mean, if you want to see every mausoleum and every uh, pagoda, then yeah, you should say two days. But if you just want to see the basics, one day is easy. Wow, 
here we are. So this is this is where the uh, royal families lived here. I think there were supposedly uh, 13 different um, royal families here uh, between 1802 and 1945, uh, and they were from the Nguyen Dynasty. Uh, which is spelled N-G-U-Y-E-N. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. And uh, we're just gonna see everything that's left here. There should be a few interesting buildings. We're just gonna walk around and just, uh, you know, read and then I'll, I'll give you a, just a summary of what we're seeing. So let's move ahead. Here's the back of the entrance. We just walked in. <laughs> I love the Chinese architecture, or I should say Chinese-inspired architecture. Check it back over there, look at the roof of that. Very, very pretty. Right behind me. And when they say citadel, they're talking about this is basically a fortress. This whole place is surrounded by a, a big stone fence and moats. So it is pretty well fortified. <laughs> So over here, you can see uh, a renovation taking place of one of the palaces. And I know they're constantly renovating the place. And it looks like this is one of the palaces they're renovating. You can see pictures of the original palace around you. I don't know if you can see uh, good pictures. But you can see all the scaffolding and stuff over there. They are working on it. So let's continue. It's a beautiful day. We're walking through this nice courtyard. And now we're going to walk into the first temple, the Tu Tu Mu Temple. Boy, oh, is that sign old. <laughs> Anne's going to do Buddhist ceremony here. Thank you. Thank you. No. Eh. No. Ah. So Anne came in and the um, caretaker told her how to do a blessing ceremony, which she just did, and he was ringing the bell behind her. And uh, then they asked for a donation, which Anne's giving. And uh, we're gonna exit now, as soon as she's done. Walking outside the temple. Oh, they got Highlands coffee here. This looks like it might have been a treasury. This building right here, very old building. Let's see what it says? Yes, this is a royal treasury. So this is where the court valuables were produced and stored. Uh, in the 18, early 1900s. So we probably can't get in. We'll just give you a view from the outside. Beautiful. Yeah, very nice architecture. Again, looks like it's got some French influence. Look at the design on this building. God, it's incredible. Look at the roof. Look at the design. So heavily Chinese influenced. They're the keepers of the building. It said, this is, uh, 
Oh, this is also a temple. This is a temple. Wow, oh, very beautiful. Look at all the design. Incredible design. Let's look in here a little closer. Uh, offering area. And these cool kind of, I don't know what to call them. Like umbrellas, I guess. Okay, we're gonna leave this temple. See what else we can find. Look at this huge grassy area. These were many buildings at one time before they were destroyed in the Ten Offensive of 1968. Again, this is a World Heritage Site, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Over here you can see just a part of a building standing in the middle of the field. You can see the Vietnamese flag back there. A lot of people like to get their picture taken in this area for some reason. All the women are dressed in their traditional costume. And now we're back in the middle of the Imperial City and we're going to try to walk to the back and see... Again, here's the one residence that's being reconstructed. And there's a palace supposedly back here. Oh, it's way back there. We're gonna walk uh, straight ahead through this big open area. And I think there's a palace behind us. Yeah, this is a big courtyard. I think this was a courtyard walking into the palace. I love the tops of the buildings, the architecture. And we're going to walk through here. Oh, there we are. Looks like that's also being reconstructed. And you can see here's another huge courtyard, but this used to be buildings. You can see foundations of all the buildings. There's long hallways walking through here. And the palace in front of us that we're seeing is called the Kien Trung Palace. And behind that is the uh, end of the citadel. There's a big wall behind it. Let's walk down the hallway. Here's some old pictures. I don't know if you can see them. Of life here before 1968. Oh, it also looks like another building with Royal Residence. It's kind of like just looking at a grand palace area that has been largely destroyed, and these are the buildings that are left. And you think to yourself, what a huge, marvelous place this used to be. It's still beautiful, but now it's unoccupied, obviously, and this is kind of showing uh, a dynasty's life uh, that finished in 1945 and then was destroyed pretty much in 1968. But even in 1968, this was basically just a uh, imperial, an old imperial city that as far as I know was not occupied. But there, were, there was a big battle in here and it uh, did a lot of damage. Okay, it's, again, so many pictures of life here before 1945, I guess. Definitely before 1968. Court officials kneeling down, the royal family. This place is just massive. There we go. There's the palace being renovated. 
the back of the Imperial City. Ooh, look at this lake here. Lake stocked with lots of uh, goldfish, I see, and probably catfish also. You can tell it's probably a courtyard of some sort or a garden with steps into the lake. And that wall is the end of that side of the citadel. We're gonna head back now. There's a couple other little temples in here and other residences, but uh, this place is big and we wanna show you one other place. Uh, so we're gonna be leaving here in just a minute. Let me find the end, there's the end. Here's one of the new and royal families of the 13 that lived here in the Nguyen dynasty. Sorry about the talking behind me. But I uh, just wanted to share one picture of what it was like, how people dressed back in those days, and what part of the dynasty looked like. It doesn't give a date, but it was sometimes between 1802 and 1945. Two of these iron cauldrons were cast in the 1600s. by one of the mean lords, one of the families, back in the 1600s, who preceded the Nguyen dynasty in the 1800s. But God, those things are massive. They're all holding rainwater. Oh, there's four of them. There's one, two, three, four in the middle of the courtyard. Very nice. This is called a palanquin, and it was for the transportation of only the royal family. Only the royal family could use it. Some sort of meeting room or residence for the royal family. Let's see what it says over here. Oh, here's one of these. Do I know what these things call? Rickshaw, right, Rickshaw, looks like for the royal. Ooh, here we get some more. This is really pretty. That's another part of the residence, but it looks like it's being used now for a coffee shop, so we won't go in. Commercial use only, that's again, commercial use only, but this is the Beautiful architecture of the city. Oh, here's one of the families. Of the Nguyen Dynasty. Wow. Look at the chairs and the furniture and the dress. Here's some furniture. This is basically part of the royal residence. Gown. This was uh, a ceremonial gown for the Empress Mother during the Nguyen Dynasty. I have something like that too. A lipstick box. <laughs> wow, that's old, made of silver. And a mirror. It's all uh, things used by the over there by the royal mother. Okay. Oh, look at that old staircase. Look at the look at the steps. <laughs> Even the steps are engraved. It's very very up. Yeah. Hardly any. It just goes straight up. Amazing. Last thing we'll be seeing before we uh, leave the citadel, the uh, Imperial City. This originally was a wooden structure that got destroyed and it's been rebuilt and this was used as a medical clinic during the Nguyen dynasty. So this is a medical clinic. We can go in here and check it out. 
Inside, there's lots of interesting pictures. Here's one of one of the queens of the Nguyen Dynasty receiving the French colony, the French colony ministry in 1931. And I think this is the uh, princess who uh, used this clinic for her medical uh, situation. I guess her when she was younger. A lot of pictures of this one princess in here. And I think this is the original building that was here. And again, more pictures of her. Oh, they call her queen. So she wasn't a princess, she was a queen. Here we see her in the later days. Okay, so that's about it. Um, great architecture, huge grounds. Uh, you know, maybe 10 to 12 building max. Believe it, there were once 160 buildings uh, before 1968 on these grounds. Uh, it just shows what a little uh, destruction can do for you, war, wartime destruction. So we're going to head out and we're going to take you to another place about uh, a, a few kilometers down the river that we think you'll like. So stay with us. Okay, so we're leaving the citadel of the Imperial City. And uh, oh, maybe lost. <laughs> no, uh, we have to go down there a little ways. We're still in one end of the city. Look at this beautiful. The snake Darling, be careful, don't go close. Uh, maybe poison this way. Oh, there it is. Oh, 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 oh yeah, that's a big snake. Oh, oh, look Darling, at that. that's a big. Yeah, it's big for me. Is that poison? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to a place called the Tian Mu Pagoda. This place is a really interesting story. Back in the 1600s, uh, there was a sort of folklore about a woman, a wise woman who sat here on this property and she envisioned a big pagoda being built here. And the reason for being built here was so the country would have economic prosperity. So several years later, one of the rulers here, it was before the Nian dynasty, but he was still a Nian member. They were called, what they, oh, they were called lords back then. This is in the 1600s. He decided to build this place and build this pagoda uh, for economic prosperity of the country. Wow. So now we're gonna see it. This is basically a vision a woman had sitting here years and years ago. Beautiful. Look at that place. This is a vision from the 1600s that actually came to fruition. Okay, so this is engraved with a poem titled Tian Mu, and it's the sound of the bell, the Tian Mu Pagoda by Emperor Tio, who lived between 1841-1847. So this is the original bell of the Tian Mu Pagoda. The, this place was originally built in the 1600s. It's been renovated a little since then, but it's a pretty old place. Golden sculptors, sculptures of Buddha. Yeah, I like that about uh, when you go into um, Buddhist uh, 
temples because they always, not always, but a lot of them have the, the whole story of Buddha's life, which is kind of cool. This will be the last place we see here in Hawaii. Uh, we have to check out of our hotel in about a half hour and be on a bus to Pong, uh, Pong. Fongya. Fongya, sorry, I can't pronounce that, Fongya. So that's about a uh, four to six hour bus ride. So uh, that's where we're going to be tonight. But we've loved it here in Hawaii. I hope you've loved everything we've uh, videoed for you. And we've had a great time here. And we'll see you on the bus. Bye, guys. We survived six hour ride. We eat the homestay. Actually, it was only five hours, and we're in uh, uh, Fong. Fong Ya. Fong, Fong, Fong Ya. Yeah, I think it's Fong Ya, but Fong Ya, and uh, we're about nine hours below Ninh Binh and about eleven hours below Hanoi. But we're moving up the coast slowly but surely. <laughs> so we just got here. It's about. Um, 10 30 at night and we're trying to figure out whether we want to uh, go on a tour or uh, just take a taxi tomorrow so we're gonna be working on that tonight before we go to bed we have to make a decision before we go to bed and we have to leave by 9 a.m tomorrow on a tour or either that or on our own taxi okay room's looking cool we got our own little house here uh we're playing we're staying in a place called what is the name of this place i think there's a house yeah no wait Oh, Tropical Valley. Tropical Valley home Homestay. Homestay. Really nice place. It's got a bunch of little rooms and homes. We got, you know, we got a bed with two... What are those, king size? Queen. I think those are king. Anyways, yeah, we're still in between a queen and king. Behind us, and we got a big bathroom and a big window looking at another house. And, uh... Uh, it's still rainy. The rain's followed us all the way up from uh, from the trying, but uh, the weather's still warm. So uh, you will see us tomorrow morning for breakfast, and we'll let you know what we decided to do. Either way, we're going caving tomorrow, <laughs> and probably some swimming and having fun. Yeah, let's see which one we're going to do. Yeah, it's you know, Vietnam is. Um, you never know what you're going to get to you get to the place and then you just find I'm out what surprised. you have to do. And, you know, it's like everything is very... Uh, it's because of the communication problems, you never really know what you're going to get. So we, we didn't know whether we were going to get a tour or whether we could just go to where we wanted to go. But we found out it's, it's uh, kind of expensive either way, but we're, we'll make a decision tonight. Okay. So see you in the morning. Okay.